I want to show you something also. Uh, we have learned that you need to go with individual rows and individual points where you scrape and cross your cuts. This is to get bearing points and the bearing points you need to measure the depth by going across and then measure the, the depth. They should be like uh, five uh, thousands of a millimeter up to uh, even one hundred. So this is to create the bearing points that will be uh, taking the load when you have the saddle in the work position and then also retain the oil within there so that you don't push out the oil and now i have used this uh, this um, technique with the um, with the uh, lift and, and go and i have a almost a mirror like image if you blew up i can do that also and we'll see that when it's sucking down it's flat and it will produce a good coverage but I would say this is only the beginning to make a finished scrape surface because if I now run the indicator along this I see some movement but not enough On some places the indicator is almost no movement so there is no no or not good enough surface texture um, so to get those 10 to 20 points per inch that i want on this piece i need to use the other techniques so what you are looking at here is uh, one of the flat sides of the on the cross lines uh, these are now rough scraped so i have good contact within one hundredth of a millimeter better all over i can primarily use i have primarily used hand scraping method use the body push method try to get most material off really doesn't matter where, which method you use but now I want to show you that it's a little bit trickier to proceed with the same technique so the actual scraping showing the different methods first uh, push uh, and lift same as we roughed but you see I don't get that short point and I have problems of and getting that uh, consistency as I want individual points and rows. Uh, if I go with the other method, like normal, but also with the body push, but it's much more easy to be consistent and to get those individual rows and also po points. But, as said, you can't beat the machine. Of course, you're supposed to only hitting, uh, hit the, the blue spots. I wanted to, to make one pass both ways now to, uh, to even out, but they, you're supposed then to cut the blue spots into two but you go the usual way rows and you get individual points very easily with the with a power scraper but as i said you can do it hand scraping also of course we have to prove it's flat and, the, and to get all um, uh, get it glued up but it, i can tell you now it's very hard with the not spending awful lot of time to get this kind of pattern at this level without power scraping it but anyway that's the benefit of a machine tool
So this is the result of a uh, rough scraping. And as you saw, I used um, tap and go. As I when I went forward, I also pushed down into the workpiece and lifted up, release the pressure and lift up before uh, I ended the movement and did not return while I was down. I lifted up so. It, that reduces the formation of a burr. So now I want to cut or to to increase the bearing points. It's uh, quite flat, so I just want to go from, let's say, rough scraping into finished scraping. And that I do by attacking the blue spots only. And I will try a new technique, for me at least, with this tap and go and as you can see I don't really master it that well yet but we can use this as practice both target practice as you can see And also scraping practice. And the more you come into the finished scraping, the more important is it to attack the blue spots only. That's sort of the thing with finished scraping. and also to make a pattern yeah pattern is somewhat haphazard yet I'm trying to reduce the sizes of the bearing spots not trying to eliminate them altogether <laughs> 